Hello, we're here at Mobile World Congress Americas, and we're with Niraj from Rate Assist, and um, they're doing some interesting things as part of the ONF Pavilion. So, uh, welcome, Niraj. How are you doing today? Good. Good to be here. How's the show? Perfectly great. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, mobile edge computing is a hot topic here at the show, and I know that, that uh, Radisys is doing a bunch around that. Can you tell me a little bit about what you're doing here? Yes, it's keeping us all at the edge here. So, uh, yeah. no, so Radisys uh, does plays a major role in edge computing or multi-access edge computing, as a lot of people call it nowadays. Um, we have a platform, and we have a platform play, and by platform I mean it's a software platform. We it's Etsy compliant, it's a Lego block approach that we use. Uh, different workloads, it could be virtualized RAN, virtualized uh, fixed, virtualized OLT, bringing in cable, CMTS, virtualized CMTS, coming in into this disaggregated platform on which we want to perform service delivery. Uh, we have a P4 programmable data plane, so we bring in elements of the virtual EPC on it. Mm -hmm. Effectively, it is bringing a platform to the edge for uh, data reduction, low latency applications that people all talk about. And Radisys comes in as a premier software solution integrator mm -hmm. that can plumb these different elements together on this NFVI platform, different elements of Mano coming in. And, uh, and there are going to be a slew of these application developers. Mm -hmm. And Radisys effectively would be the one who would be bolting this on to this platform, providing the plumbing onto this edge compute platform that we provide. So let's talk about use cases because uh, obviously the edge is becoming more and more significant with some of the future use cases like 5G and IoT. So can you tell me a little bit about how you're helping enable those? So before we go there, uh, the edge, right? I mean, people define the edge in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know that the edge had seven different definitions or eight or nine, mm -hmm. uh, everything from far edge to near edge. And effectively at some point, your the phone is going to become an edge, right? Right. Or the uh, car. Or the car. Yeah. Uh, and then you get into IoT and connected car. <laughs> and I have a little uh, box that sits on curbside and that takes care of, you know, all of the programming that goes back and forth. Right. So we we definitely um, are looking at applications that we did last year We at uh, in Barcelona. What we showed was, uh, at MWC Barcelona, in fact, we showed uh, an AR VR application. And that was more focused around, you know, how customers building these apps will leverage our edge compute platform, you know, with all the bells and whistles of NFVI, Etsy compliance, Mano, you know, all built in. Today, my colleague over here, what he's going to show is our application for doing grand programmable awareness. So a video surveillance or what we, you know, want to call it has facial recognition. Mm -hmm. So it could be any workload. The idea is how do we now bring in the constructs of awareness from the RAN mm -hmm. into our edge compute platform. Tell us a little bit about what you're showing here. Right, so uh, continuing to what Niraj was mentioning, uh, we are going to demonstrate a multi-access edge computing software platform that is essentially made to enable edge computing. Mm -hmm. uh, essentially, it's a platform service which is going to expose all those necessary services over an API which these mobile edge applications, and that's a huge myriad of applications, you know, the AR, VRs, the CDNs and the face detection applications or what have you, mm -hmm. they're going to pick up all that information available from our uh, edge computing platform software and then use them in an intelligent manner to really provide those really cool use cases that the operators and the service providers can use in order to really get into those uh, adjacencies and available telecom opportunities of adjacent revenues. Yeah. So what, so what cool use cases do you have here? So, uh, you know, use cases are pretty imperative with respect to edge computing mm -hmm. and, you know, everybody has a very different uh, understanding with respect to the use case. Yeah. Now, we don't uh, act on the use case space essentially, but for us to stitch the story completely, for the platform services that we have, we have to pick a couple of use cases. Mm -hmm. We've categorized this into two broad uh, categories of use cases. The first one is data analytics use case, and the second one is traffic uh, steering use case. What we'll show today is a traffic steering use case, essentially where we are trying to provide lower latencies by steering the traffic, not going all the way to the core, but getting it uh, you know, kind of uh, locally broken out at the edge so that you can save the backhaul costs. Mm -hmm. Now, even, even after doing that, uh, when there is an intrusion that gets detected, we want to detect it at runtime. That's where our phase detection application comes into the picture. I see. And then once we have detected a phase, which is kind of an intrusion for us, mm -hmm. we then at real time, without any manual intervention, without any manual configuration required at the edge platform, 
we can steer it back to the court where you know typically uh, one of these uh, lawful agencies would be sitting in and mm -hmm. they need that fee is that once a face is uh, detected there is an intrusion that has been detected the face detection application is going to feed the uh, edge computing platform services to now steer the traffic back to the core mm -hmm. where the you know the lawful agency is already residing all right great so the way we are going to do it is obviously i do not have a full fledged network out here yeah. but we have kind of put an analogy of it so yeah. uh, what do you see here at the uh, leftmost corner is the access so we have a video camera which is kind of the video surveillance that's going mm -hmm. to take in the feed what you see in the center here is at the edge so we are kind of you know depicting the edge from mm -hmm. this laptop and uh, on this machine we are actually running our edge computing platform software mm -hmm. and that's the core mm. so as you can see the name tags over there access edge and the core oh, yeah. uh, there's a constant feed which is going on uh, from this video mm -hmm. and none of that is coming to the core because uh, our edge computing platform software is locally breaking it out to the edge so that's the first thing that we are doing which is the backhaul savings none of that goes to the core everything is steered at the edge Yeah so uh, the first uh, part part of the demonstration is uh, backhaul savings through uh, steering the traffic at the edge which is is what you can see the entire traffic or the entire feed of the video is being uh, monitored or is being steered at the edge nothing going to the core so there is no face identified and the second step is I'm going to introduce my colleague whose face has already been trained to the face detection application uh, so Ravi if you could just So all in. the people on screen now are okay right right So the moment Ravi comes in the face detection application actually realizes that okay that's a face this is an intrusion and the face detection application then triggers the edge computing platform software that that's the time now this feed should go back all the way to the core so the moment Ravi comes into the screen you know you can see that this screen starts operating as well and this is where the core is where the control room operator is he mm -hmm. wants to see this feed mm -hmm. so now if Ravi goes out of the screen that goes off and then you know the regular backhaul saving comes into the picture and we're steering everything at the edge okay so that's so, pretty much what so we have so it's intelligent it understands when there's an event happening at the edge that needs to be transferred to the core or when it's not absolutely so it saves quite a bit absolutely and 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 the biggest the significant thing here is you know this this is an overall use case but the real value add here comes in from that edge computing platform software which is able to do this at run time without any configuration changes without any manual intervention what about computing power i mean if you're moving such uh, intelligence to the edge you think you need more computing power at the edge absolutely so to niraj's point you know uh, there are different skews that pe uh, typically people talk about now obviously the computing horsepower would be much much lower when you're talking about an edge computing platform residing on top of a you know a, a flag pole or an antenna mm -hmm. it's going to be much more a uh, little bit more horsepower when you're talking about you know a 4RU or a 6RU box at the edge you know mm -hmm. at the tar sites mm -hmm. it is absolutely going to be much more powerful when you go more and more into the different levels of aggregation mm -hmm. across the network mm -hmm. so uh, the the thing is that you know we are a software vendor uh, what we are providing is a platform software mm -hmm. now from a software perspective we are completely agnostic to what kind of an horsepower is given is given to us mm -hmm. now the more horsepower is given to us the better we can perform so it's all about the optimizations and the performances that we can but provide but it's commercial boxes right these are all commercial boxes off the shelf uh, and the software is commodity software so you know you can run it on any x86 off the shelf box all right perfect rishi thank you so much for your time today pleasure meeting you and have a great rest thank of your show thank you all mine